Well, welcome to another video. This one's uh, a bit unexpected. I've been doing some work on PCA 9685 server driver boards and while I was in the middle of doing the level crossing project this little linear servo arrived on my desk. It's a GS1502. Now I bought this thing off AliExpress. I'm just going to swap screens. Uh, the first thing that happened when this arrived on my desk, I was shocked at just how small it was. Um, the travel from one end to the other, the usable travel, is about 7 millimeters. I've put it next to this steel rule just to give you an idea of the size in sort of millimeters. I'm always on the lookout for items for model railways and at the moment I use the MG90S servos. Those are like the um, little blue SG90S servos that a lot of people use except they've got metal gears so they'll last a bit longer. But one of the things that you always have with the servo with model railways if you want to use them for turnouts we want linear movement whereas the servo is doing an arc. So I wondered about the servo. I was looking for some bits on AliExpress and this came up. So I thought, well, let's have a look and see what it's like. So it arrived and it is small. Um, good points and bad points. Let's nip down to some of the specs. So little things like weight. It weighs next to nothing. Um, as you'll see in the video, it moves pretty fast. Torque. Um, it's not that strong. Compared to an MG90 or an SG90, this is a bit of a wimp. Um, it says maximum rotation 180 degrees. That actually should be a linear distance. Uh, it runs on 3.7 to 5 volts. I've been running mine on 5 volts, um, just straight off the PCA9685. Um, the gears are nylon, and I'm going to be honest with you, it is not going to last a long time. Uh, it says that it has a life cycle of 15,000 whatevers. I'm going to assume that's movements, but that's unloaded. Now, why on earth would I have a servo moving backwards and forwards that it's not moving anything? So if you attach something to it, the issue that I have with this servo, if we go back to the picture, you've got this arm here, which is the arm you attach whatever you're moving to. And this obviously is a standard nylon item and it moves up and down this threaded rod. Well, I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, the gears seem a little bit wobbly, but I'm sure they'll be fine. Uh, the motor did get quite warm if, when I was racing it backwards and forwards non-stop. So I'm going to be honest with you, from the start, this won't be taking over the points on my model railway. I may well use it for some animations that aren't being used a lot. And obviously, wherever I use it, I'm going to have to be able to get to it to replace it because 15,000 movements, hmm, I'm not sure how how many it'll actually do. I would think under load, less than half of that. So pros and cons, it's very, very small. It's dead easy to control, as we'll see in the code in a minute. I basically plugged it in the PCA9685 board and ran some you know, basic code using that board and it ran straight away with the normal settings that I'd use for an MG90 or SG90. That's good because it means on the same board I can have a mixture of items. It is a true linear movement and it's pretty quiet. Um, you'll hear a little buzz as it whizzes up and down flat out but when it's moving slower it is dead silent. So the cons, life expectancy, and the torque. It's not the strongest of items. Whizzing down, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the circuits because if you go to the Digital Town website you can download all of this and there is a link to the PCM9685 uh, servo board tutorial 
if you've never used one of these servo driver boards these are the connections for a few boards and there's a diagram here for you but let's uh, just now move on to the code in fact before we do the code let's just see this thing running Apologies for the dodgy video. That thing is so small it is really difficult to film. Uh, what I was trying to show in part of it was looking down on the threaded rod and you'll probably notice it makes a slight buzz as it's moving the servo flat out. If it was moving that servo flat out under load I'm not convinced that that nylon um, item is going to last forever on that threaded rod moving at a slower speed with a lighter load yeah it'll last but again they're saying it's only going to move 15,000 times before it's had its anyway so I would bank on half of that maybe a third pessimist here so whatever you're building make sure you can get at it to replace it thankfully they are dirt cheap anyway onto the code the code I've written is quick and dirty um, it uses the Adafruit PWM servo driver so you're going to need to load the wire library and the servo driver library if you've not used that item before there's a link in the top of the code to a tutorial I've already done on that board uh, which will make life easier in the settings the only difference I have made in the settings was I tweaked this value. The original value was 600 which I use on the MG and the SG 90s. I changed it to 832 because this just affects the distance that the item travels. Now the issue with these if they move right to the end if they touch that piece of metal here or here it puts pressure on the threaded rod and it won't move. You've got a turn it by hand to get it to move the other way so that particular value there you can tweak it and uh, just alter the total distance that it will move it did work with this value obviously but I just wanted to make sure that I've got a little bit of clearance in there right so we've got the uh, servo board settings um, very simple setup start the servo board with the various items that it needs to make it work. Uh, the servo frequency is the normal uh, frequency for servo so the great thing about this you could put it on you can match these with SG or MG 90s uh, put them on the same PCA 9685 board and it'll all work happy together. The code basically all I did was I use a system I've written a function that takes the funny um, code way of uh, making the Adafruit library work um, I just made it easier so I can just pass a servo number and a position now I just happen to have plugged my servo into port 15 on the board uh, if we look at the wiring diagram if you're not used to this uh, port 15 was the very end port it was just easy to get to let's be honest right once it was plugged in so what it's doing there here it's saying move the servo at port 15 to 179 now that equates to degrees but you have to get your head around that's moving from one end to the other just think of it as moving seven millimeters in uh 180 steps so I'm saying I want it to move right to the end which is 179 then I want it to move right back to zero after a two second delay 
don't use delay in production code but this is doing nothing else so it doesn't matter then what I've done is I've told it to move from 0 to 179 so it's moving in one degree steps at uh, 50 millisecond gaps and that gives the much smoother movement that's all there is to the code um, I've done some other examples on servos if you wanted to do something much more complicated this was just basically looking at the item uh, it's a nice unit uh, it's got its limitations but I can also see from a model railway point of view it's the sort of thing that's small enough that you could put a figure on it or something that sort of thing or just something that you wanted in a workshop or a building to move it's that sort of item that you would use for that type of animation so that's basically today's video that's the s uh, the uh, gs1502 linear servo motor so if you see one worth picking them up one oddity just to remember they do come in different fittings uh, mine had a, a plug that was completely useless i had to put a standard header plug on it you can buy them with the right plug and they also come in a left-handed and a right-handed version so uh, if that's useful for you give the video a like and if you like this type of thing please subscribe see you soon